Stress is a sleep killer. Natural, over-the-counter supplements have been shown to have dramatic impact on reducing stress. So today, I want to talk about six of my top over-the-counter supplements that I usually recommend to my patients. Please remember that you should always consult with your physician before starting a supplement regimen. But if taken correctly and under the supervision of a medical professional, I found these to be wonderful supplements that alleviate stress and in turn, give you better sleep. One of my favorite supplements I like to recommend for stress is ashwagandha. Ashwagandha is a great substance that's been used in Ayurvedic medicine for stress for years and years. I mean, like thousands of years, probably. It's very much clinically proven to reduce stress. And the clinical studies show that ashwagandha reduces cortisol. Now, remember, cortisol is that fight or flight thing. So when you get startled or when it's difficult for you to fall asleep, this is one of the things that helps slow that down. I want to be clear, though, there's a bunch of different types of ashwagandha. And some companies have actually created different almost isotopes. So that way you can find exactly what you're looking for. The general dose for stress and sleep is somewhere between like 125 and almost 600 milligrams. It's clinically shown to reduce stress in adults at 125 milligrams up to 500 milligrams. The brand name is called Sensoril. Some companies will take Sensoril and they'll put it into their stack, their supplement stack. And so you just wanna be aware, this is actually a very highly produced um, substance and it's in a good way. So it takes out all of the junk and really narrows it down to the few things that we know clinically help reduce stress. 600 milligrams for a special ashwagandha that's called KSM-66 actually showed improved mood as well. So when you're thinking about it, it's kind of cool because now not only is ashwagandha something that you can look at, but there's actually types of ashwagandha that can be very, very helpful. So what did we see? We saw a reduction um, in depression and anxiety, which was really the big one, and in their general health questionnaire. Uh, we saw drops from about 70% positive to only 2 to 5% positive. So when you're talking about it, it's, it's really quite effective, and that was versus placebo. What I tell people to do is buy a small bottle, try it at the lowest clinical dose, see how it works with you, check with your doctor first, make sure you're not doing any interactions. But the Sensoril, I personally have tried once or twice, and I found it to be quite effective as well. Now, the next one that I wanna talk about is L-theanine. L-theanine is kind of interesting because historically, this is the thing, this is actually the uh, amino acid that's found in green and black tea. And oddly enough, it helps support sleep. Now you'd think it's in tea, Michael. Why, why, why is it gonna be supporting sleep? L-theanine is really interesting because it actually helps relax the body by acting on alpha one and two EEG brain waveforms. So what this means is when you are awake, but your eyes are closed, your brain is sending off really high spiky waves. When you take L-theanine, they start to slow down and they start to quantify, which is really very, quite interesting. It really does support better sleep at right around 200 milligrams a day, in part by actually stimulating the release of serotonin and GABA. We're gonna talk about GABA in just a second, but it really helps you unwind. So L-theanine is one of those things, even though it, you see it in green and black tea, do me a favor, don't take it in green and black tea because it's full of caffeine. If you can take it just as the substance, you're gonna actually do pretty well with it. Somewhere between 50 and maybe 200 milligrams is a good area for supporting stress. It does cross the brain bar a blood brain barrier, so it works fairly quickly within about 30 minutes. And it's considered generally considered a safe substance in dosing up to about 1,000 milligrams, but do not do that. I would never take more than about 200 milligrams at a time. Now, the next one I wanna talk about is something called GABA. You may have seen it out there. It's a gamma amino butyric acid. GABA. I call GABA the breaks of the brain, okay? And, and we endogenously, we make GABA. We make plenty of it, but you can actually have it uh, come in from the outside as a supplement. It's a naturally occurring amino acid again, and it's produced inside the gut. GABA is really kind of what we call the main inhibitory neurotransmitter, i.e. the breaks of the brain. I usually see people taking this somewhere between 100 and 200 milligrams a day, it usually works within about 60 minutes. So GABA takes a little bit longer than something like L-theanine does, again, to help slow the body down and to help relax the body. They don't do exactly the same thing either. So as an example, if you're trying to slow down your brain, then L-theanine is gonna help you focus, but GABA is gonna help you slow down. Those are very different when you're looking at them that way. Now, the next one, 5-HTP. Now, 5-HTP is a very interesting amino acid in the body because it's naturally produced, and this is the substance that makes serotonin. Now, for folks out there who wanna remember, serotonin's the neurotransmitter, and it's a mood-regulating hormone. When you've got more serotonin, a lot of people report feeling happier, better sense of well-being, 
Serotonin, believe it or not, contributes to the production of melatonin, which obviously we know plays a key role in sleep. And so for some people, they may not have enough, enough 5-HTP. And so this could be, in fact, something that could be worthwhile to try. I look at somewhere between 50 and 200 milligrams a day, but you need to be careful with this in particular. Why? Because when it is combined, when 5-HTP is combined with other antidepressants, Zoloft, Prozac, any of them, it can actually increase serotonin levels too high. This is what's called serotonin syndrome, and this can be very, very problematic for folks. So I wanna really put in a note of caution here. Before you ever take 5-HTP, always talk with your doctor about it because it could affect your SSRIs or it could affect something else, and I want everybody to be very safe. Now, the next one I wanna talk about is magnesium. So there's a lot of press about magnesium and trying to understand how does it work. Remember, number one, it is an essential mineral necessary for all kinds of things like bones, muscle, heart, and nervous system. Now, we have to eat our magnesium. We don't, our body does not produce it. However, our bones are reservoirs of magnesium. So as we're eating our magnesium, it seems to get stored in our bones and then it's extracted as it's needed. Believe it or not, magnesium seems to be involved in the, as the data says, over 300 different enzymatic systems and, and processes that go on in the body. So there's a lot going on here. But one of the main things that a lot of people don't know and understand is that magnesium has a very big effect on circulating vitamin D. In fact, you could actually go outside for 30 minutes, but if you don't have enough magnesium in your system, it's very hard to convert that vitamin D. Why do I keep going on about vitamin D? Vitamin D is your main circadian pacemaker. This is the vitamin that comes through your body through light, right? And it actually helps your body stay in the circadian system. So by taking magnesium, you're helping your vitamin D, which is actually helping your circadian system. The recommended daily uh, allowance is somewhere in the 400 uh, or so 420 milligram range. Any good source is gonna have about maybe 50 milligrams, an excellent source, maybe 84. When you're looking at big sources for magnesium, it's always about leafy greens. Why? Magnesium is actually inside the chlorophyll. Uh, of the leafy greens. So when we eat that, that's how we get most of our magnesium. Now, remember, most of the soil out and around and about has been over tilled, which means that the magnesium um, and, the, and the minerals are not coming up and going through the root stalks and getting to the leafy greens. So, you know, you can have a spinach salad every day and you still might not get enough magnesium. So I oftentimes tell people this is definitely one of the things you want to consider from a supplementation standpoint. It can be different for men versus women, and it can actually be different depending upon how much you sweat. So a lot of people don't know this, but magnesium for people who work out, let's say, every day and do cardio every day, they actually lose more magnesium than people who don't. That's not a bad thing because magnesium comes out in sweat. It just means you may have to up your supplementation or your diet. So for folks out there um, who are females, you're looking at about 200, 250 milligrams a day. For males, you may go up to 350 or 400. And then for people who are heavy exercises, male or female, you probably want to add an extra 100 milligrams on top of that dose. But be careful. If you go past about 400, 450, maybe even 500 milligrams, you could have diarrhea. And that's one of the things, that's kind of how you know that you've gone too far because when you have too high of a dose, it can cause some sort of GI distress and that's really what you want to avoid. If you're thinking about which magnesium supplement to try, there's like 10 different kinds of magnesium. So magnesium glycinate is really probably the best place to start because it's easy on the stomach. It's also fairly easy to absorb. Magnesium citrate is another one that you might see out there. Sometimes I find a combo of the two of them can work quite well for people. Now there is a, a little bit of data out there on magnesium threonate as a big sleep aid. To be honest with you, I've really only found one study that helps support that. So I don't think the data is in yet on threonate. Also, it doesn't absorb nearly as well as glycinate and citrate do. So I'm telling people really want to think through, maybe have a combination of all three, so that way you can really get the magnesium that you're looking for. Now, here's another thing that most people don't know, is there's a whole host of things that deplete magnesium out of your body. So I already told you about exercise, but did you know that hormone replacement therapy does this? Digoxin, which is a medication used in heart failure, I mean, antibiotics, birth control, there's all kinds of things that deplete magnesium out of your body. So if I'm going to tell you one thing that I really think you probably should consider, magnesium is probably going to be it. 
because quite frankly, none of us have, are getting the amount that we need. When I say none of us, when you look at the national data, I think it's like 45% of the population, so like one in two people is deficient in magnesium. I think that number is even greater for vitamin D, and if I had to guess, it's because the magnesium is low and that's also affecting their vitamin D. So the final one is valerian. I like valerian for a lot of different reasons. Um, number one, it's probably the most studied herb for sleep that's out there. It unfortunately smells awful, like old socks. Um, if you've ever had valerian tea, it's just, I mean, you have to hold your nose while you drink it, so most people will use it in a capsule. I've found it to actually be the most useful when combined with hops. Uh, there's actually a, several pieces of data to suggest that a valerian hops combination could be very good. I like to use this um, when somebody tells me that they have a hard time falling asleep. Um, this is a definitely kind of an area that works well. It does appear to modulate the GABA receptors, so valerian seems to affect your indwelling GABA as opposed to you having to take more GABA. Some studies show that it improves sleep latency, meaning it takes less time to fall asleep as well as sleep quality. I like it somewhere in the 300 to 500 milligram range, um, and you want to take it about 30 minutes to maybe an hour before bed. For the tea, um, which I don't recommend, but some people love it, you want to soak two or three grams of the dried herbal version in the tea and then dump it out because you don't want to ingest it at all. Um, you know, looking at it overall, what's very interesting for valerian is it does appear to have an effect on some benzodiazepines. So if you are, for example, taking a anxiety medication, you probably do not want to mix it with valerian. Once again, this is when you really need to be talking with your doctor. So anytime that you are taking any type of medication, even if it's not for stress or psychiatric or mental health issues, you want to check with your doctor before you use any of the herbs that we've been discussing today, because that will could affect those as well. And we want to make sure that you're going to be safe. So one of the things that I haven't talked about yet is, and a lot of people like to think about kava for stress reduction and sleep, but kava has a black box recommendation about it for liver toxicity. So if you've got liver problems, kava probably isn't a good idea. And by the way, valerian affects both St. John's wort, kava, and melatonin. So again, you're not you don't want to do a kitchen sink. You don't want to throw everything in the bucket at the same time. You want to work with somebody who knows what they're doing and take a very measured approach. And then you should be able to figure out the way to help reduce your stress uh, through your supplement stack. So if you find you're having trouble sleeping because of your stress and anxiety, these supplements could actually be life changers. But remember, supplements are only part of the solution. I know that when you turn off the light, climb into bed, and you're alone with your thoughts, that's often the prime time for these things to just come flooding in. So I put together a video about some of my favorite breathing exercises to help with stress and anxiety and your sleep. So do me a favor, check out my full video right here. This is Dr. Michael Bruce, The Sleep Doctor, wishing you sweet dreams.